All right guys, so what's going on? So before I even introduce either him or myself, I want you guys to first know that if you click the description below, you can go to any chapter of this video and skip right to the questions that you want answered. So you don't have to listen to us, or especially him, talk. So with that being said, why don't you introduce yourself? No, you don't really care. Just wait. Okay, as you guys know, uh, this chump over here is Matthew Martin. Yep. Um, today, I'm gonna be guest starring on his, uh, his so-called YouTube series <laughs> that, what he calls a YouTube series. Um, this is going to be an Air Force Q&A uh, general. It's going to be very, very, very general. Very broad, so, yeah. Yeah, very broad. It's going to cover a wide array of topics. Uh, you know, things from basic training to possibly retirement to the Air Force rank structure to um, even when, you know, what happens if you do drugs and you want to join the military and uh, rules and regulations, all that good stuff. So these are questions that we have come across throughout our careers. Um, and not only have we personally come across it, it's just things you hear. I mean, it's they're questions that are very common. Some of them are, are, are common sense, not as in the answers are in common sense. It's just questions you would assume everybody would want to know. Yeah, right? it's mostly so. the things that like, even that we were concerned about when we joined. Now, granted, he's been in longer than I have, but yep. I mean, it doesn't really change over time. You know, it's the same common problems that everyone runs into or that they're curious about. It's the same stuff. It doesn't really exactly. Matter. So speaking of me being in longer, I uh, again, Anthony Anderson. I've been in six years now. I uh, joined January 2012, that was when I went to uh, basic training, boot camp, BMT, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, we're both here in Northern California right now on the base yep. recording in his dorm room. Uh, yep. Army, Marines would call it barracks, we call it dorms. Um, because, so, you know, we're spoiled like that. Yeah. Yep. So let us, uh, you, you want to begin now? Yeah, so what is the first question that we got? So, okay. if I remember correctly, it is, um, uh, can you join, or what should I do if I have smoked weed, should I tell my recruiter or not? Well, not just... If you just... have a record. Exactly. Not just smoking weed. But if you have a record of any u yeah. usage of anything. We're talking narcotics, pills, weed, whatever you can think of. Yep. If you have done those, then I guarantee you there's a good portion of you out there that are afraid to go talk to the recruiter or doubting that... I would bet money on it that one of you people watching right now is nervous yeah. about that. Bet that money. It's, it, it is scary. Oh yeah. Um, not, not scary. I, I can tell you right now, I, I know a ton of people who have done that stuff and... They got it, no problem. So give them, we'll give you two answers. We'll give you the Air Force answer and then, you know, the politically correct Air Force answer and then we'll give you kind of the street, down to earth. Uh, personable answer. Personable, talking to you as a friend type of answer. So I, the Air Force answer. So I understand that there could be a lot of circumstances where you would not disclose whether or not you've been there or not. You're afraid that your recruiter will sell you out to the cops. You're afraid of, say, you go and list with your mom or dad and you're afraid of them finding out or, you know, any other kind of crap that oh. could really influence your decision. No. Excuse me. Realistically, that could definitely affect whether or not you're going to be honest with your recruiter. So the Air Force politically correct answer is be a sweetheart and tell them. Yep. Nothing bad will happen. The personable answer and the real answer that people have done so many times is that they lie. Oh, yeah. People, and that's, and I'm not trying to, I'm not name tossing, I'm not name dropping, I'm not calling anyone a scumbag. I'm just saying it's, people have lied. That's definitely. Straight up. So, <clears throat> I actually talked to a guy the other day. He... He must have. He smoked weed probably every single day of his life up until he joined. Uh, he went into the recruiter, and one of the you know, you, you you get to meet your recruiter. You start the paperwork. You start asking questions. One of the things they ask you is, "Yep, have you ever done any drugs?" Now, I promise you, there is at least half of the people out there that are in the military that have said yes. That is okay. Yep. Listen, if you've smoked weed your entire life, most people just say yes. I've done it four or five times and that's totally fine they just need to know sometimes your recruiter will give you a number they'll say you can join as long as you haven't smoked more than 30 times or taken pills four times yeah, I, I've heard some ridiculous too. statistics yeah, so yeah. narcotics are obviously a little worse than, than than marijuana is alcohol isn't usually a problem I mean you know usually you're underage drinking is a problem but it's a in the military it's it's very much a problem yeah but there, the thing is that there's really no way to patrol it or fix it because everyone wants to go home no one wants to sit around patrolling young airmen every day of their life. Yeah, exactly. You so, point is, if you've smoked, yes, you can absolutely join. If you've taken, if you've taken pills, you can join. Yes, you can. Listen, here's one thing you got to understand. Your recruiters, some, they, they have the potential of making more money or getting bonuses if they, if they recruit you. Mm -hmm. So, Depending I'll on your tell job. you right now, my recruiter lied for me about certain things, not necessarily about drugs, but about other things. Plenty of other recruiters have done that. I've talked to so many people. I'm not just saying that 
because that's what you want to hear. I'm being completely serious. There are so many recruiters out there that will help lie for you, and they know the ins and outs. They know what's okay to put down on paper. They know what's not. They know what's acceptable, etc. So you can, can join if you have done drugs. I promise. Don't worry about that. The the recruiter will not sell you out to the cops. Like I said, he's your friend. He want he can't do it. Two, he wants to help you because it helps him. Because so. it gets him paid. They have yeah. a quota to meet. If, especially month. for special jobs like, I don't know, maybe spec ops, intel, special stuff that's not your run-of-the-mill maintainer or cop. If they or push book. you through, they get bonuses. Yeah. Like, it looks good on them. The more people they push through, the better. They're not trying. They don't want to send you back out the door. They want to. They want to send you through. It's like a car salesman. Mm -hmm. They're they're just salesmen. That's all they are. Yep. They uh, with a lot of paperwork uniform. that they have to do. They're salesmen who wear uniforms. That's all. They, that's all yeah. they are. So, yes. Just don't tell them you've done drugs every. I mean, come on. Think about it a little bit here. One thing I want to say also is if you go up to the recruiter and be like, "No, I've never smoked a day in my life," he's not gonna be like, "Really? Honestly? Blah blah blah. Yeah, I don't believe that." And he's not gonna try to fish it out. He'll just say, "Okay, cool. Yeah, right." They'll down. they'll take your word for it. So yeah. if you're I'm not trying to sit here and say, tell you to lie. I'm just sitting here and trying to say it's not as bad as you think. That's my answer. It's not as bad as you think. Do what you feel needs to be done. But yeah. understand that there can be repercussions if you really lie out your out your bum hole. All right? Don't, and, don't push it too far. And we were talking about this earlier. Honestly, if they kick people out of the military for drugs, then... We wouldn't have a military. We would not have a military. I know so... The, the most, like, down-to-earth... Like, people you would think that... They're just goody two shoes. I'm just gonna mm -hmm. sum it up. Say they're goody two shoes, right? Yeah. And these guys, like, they're like, as soon as I get out of the military, as soon as I retire, you know what I'm saying? So, honestly, we wouldn't have military if it was like that. Please, still go to your recruiter. You can, like I said, I cannot harp this enough. You can tell them you have done drugs. Just don't, don't tell them you've done heroin and shot up with a needle. <laughs> That's a little ridiculous. But yes, you, you've. Or snowed some of that cocaine. Fine. That's fine. They understand how it is. The military understands how it is. As long as you. As long as you can say you have done it, if you really have a few times, whatever, it's fine. Just be honest. Yeah. Just be honest. That's all we Not ask. Not too honest, but somewhat honest. Yeah. Be, just <laughs> be honest. <laughs> so, next question then. What is MEPS? All right. So, to put MEPS into Barney terms, that's my favorite MEPS word. MEPS is M-E-P-S, yeah. by the way. Military Interesting Processing Station. So, to put it simply, MEPS is a place where you get physically violated to see if you can join the military. No, I'm just joking. But... I am and I'm not. So they're going to put you through a ring of tests and exams. Hearing, vision, physical tests, check your body, you're going to get a physical. The whole nine yards, they're going to check every aspect of you. Yep. And before you can do any of that, if you have never taken an ASVAB before in your life, you will when you go to MEPS. Just throwing that out there so be prepared for that. So, a little more on that, like he was saying. It's it's just one building. They usually have one in every major city. In every uh, branch of the military that they want to join in that local area goes to the same MEPS. Air Force doesn't go to yeah. one MEPS. Marine doesn't go to the other. They all, they all go to the all same place. All branches go to the same MEPS. Yes. If you're scheduled on that day, you're going to see other people that are scheduled on the day from all branches. You're going to go in there. It's a building. You'll, you'll line up in single file line. They'll do your hearing, your vision. They'll give you a physical. So yes, they're gonna they're gonna pinch your nuts. Um, For females, I don't know what that entails, but expect the worst, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We're we're speaking, I don't know. we're speaking mostly for males here. They're gonna check your butt. Mm -hmm. um, I already said hearing. They're gonna check your weight, your height, your mobility. They'll make you do duck walking. Um, Basic movements, yeah, stuff like all that. All that good stuff. So check your back, your spine. It's whatever. gonna be a few hours. Not bad. Uh, it's it's not, a long day. It's not boot camp though that you're going to at that point no one's going to yell at you they're just regular civilians just not entirely to... my maps had some military personnel and they weren't mean about it but they were strict yeah. of like you go here you go here gotcha. you go here I what i mean you. is you're not going to get yelled at they're not going to get up and be, get you know yeah, they're not, not going to do all that yeah. good stuff so um that's mips yep it's so. basically a two to three long day vocation of just checking to make sure you can join it before they even start the paperwork it can be a day long too mine was actually a day long oh and to get there, you will go to your recruiting station when your recruiter, when he tells you or he or she tells you to get there, uh, and they will bus you out there. They will they will bus you or, or put you in a van and they'll take you there. And it's all everything's paid for. You don't have to worry about anything yep. coming out of pocket. So it's the next question. Next question. Let's see here. ASVAB. So how? What is the ASVAB? What does it stand for? How many different types are there? Yep. How many questions are on it? And what is the most common one? For military, all right. So I going into the military. So. so knowing me and my if the memory having the memory of Dory, I don't remember exactly what the ASVAB stands for. Um, oh my god! So armed services ASVAB is A S V A B. That yep. is armed services vocational aptitude, uh, aptitude and battery. Yeah. Oh, really? Why don't you go to work and ask if anyone there could actually recite what that stands for? Really? They're not going to remember. Probably everybody. Pressing on. No, they're not. 
So there are three types of ass bath. Um, the third one, honestly, doesn't apply really. The, yeah, don't ever worry about it. We don't even remember what it's called, right? No, we, that's how irrelevant it really is. Yeah, I don't. I've never met anybody of the thousand people I've worked with or come across that has ever taken that or heard of it. But the other two are the cat, the C A T ass bath, um, and then your student ass bab. So yep. the explain explain the cat ass bab. So the cat ass vab is the uh, that's the traditional one that you'll take like in the situation that I mentioned earlier in this video where had you if you're in that awkward position like I was when I joined that you're not in high school anymore you graduated but you're not in college so you enlist straight up in the armed services you will take the ass vab at maps on a computer that's what you'll end up doing yep at maps yep yep and it's 129 questions from what we what we found online and it's broken up into multiple different categories there is an estimation of how long each category will take you. But as far as I remember, you have as much time as you need. Yes, I believe that is right. So, yeah, so Cat Asfab, it's, I don't care who you are, I don't care if you're Marines, Army, Navy, whatever. You are going to have to take the Cat Asfab. You will take it at MIPS. They'll lock, they'll bring you into this room. You and, you know, 10, Whoever 20, else, 30, yeah. 40 other people are going to take you into this room. You're going to log into a computer and you're going to take this test. It's like an end of the year school test. So it's, like, it's basically everything you learned in high school. Yep. Um... They'll test you on like uh, how how arithmetic, how you solve puzzles, word problems, math problems, things like that. Mechanical um, problems, electrical problems, stuff like that. Yeah, it's very it's a broad category of how much you know about these, you know, primary specific topics. Specific subjects. But, yeah, specific subjects. Yeah. And the whole point is to just test to see what you could be good at in the military. That's the entire point. So yeah. there's one thing that That's we want to yeah. There's one thing we want to harp on that you will take, if your career is worth anything, a practice ASVAB. Now this as now this practice, I swear on it, is much harder than the actual ASVAB. Yes, don't let that, if you've already taken the practice ASVAB and you've got like a 20 on it, you will probably not get a 20 on the real one. The no. practice one is much harder. I think I got like low 50s on the practice and ended up being like an 80. We both got like mid 80 ASVAB yeah. scores. It's, well, I got low 80, I'm not as good as you. But, <laughs> but the, the whole yeah. point is just that if you score low on that, don't get discouraged. The whole point is to see like, where can they estimate you being? Chances are like, everybody else that I've ever talked to, you'll score higher. Yeah. So, again, going back to what you were saying, so if you, it's to test to see where they should put you in the Air Force. So if you, like Martin was saying earlier, is they have a mechanical and electrical uh, testing. So how, how internal combustion engines work in a car. If you're bad with all of that stuff, then you're probably not going to get a mechanic job working on jets and planes and stuff like that in the Air Force. So that's why, that's the whole point of the test. That's why they test you. So then I'm be nervous about it. It's just to see like what what are your strengths already so we can build upon those strengths to maximize your potential in the military. Yes. So we don't have to start from the ground up. Now, don't get me wrong. You might end up, end up in a job where you know absolutely nothing. And that's fine. That's what we have tech training for. But like anything you ever do in life, if you already have a basis and you're going to excel at that more in life through something else, it's easier to have a foundation of knowledge. Okay. Last part of the SVAB. Can, is there any way these guys study? Act, study, yes, yeah. study or get resources to help them? Yeah, so I get this question a lot, and people say, what should I study or what should I do? Two things I, I harp on for mostly is just that study old high school reference material, like the basic, basic uh, category, subjects, math, science, whatever, and take yeah. practices online. There is so many out there. Free. Free, straight up. Yeah, you can Google ASVAB practice test. La you can take a practice test, ASVAB study material. You can buy physical pamphlets or books. At your local library, you can take a look at the ASVAB book for dummies. Yeah. It's, guys, there is so much material out there, I think it's crazy. You just got to be willing to do put the time in to go and find it. Now, last two things I want to say. There is a minimum requirement. Yes. For each branch. The yes. Air Force has the highest one. I believe it is in the 50s right it's now. It's 50 straight. 50, okay. When I went in, you had to get at least a 55 to even join the Air Force. From Army, Marines is 30s, I So say. if you score a little 30s, you need a waiver. You, you can enlist with a okay. waiver. Yeah. With an ASVAB waiver. Okay. But then your, jo your job choices are very limited at that point. Exactly. So, there is a minimum score. Um, and then lastly, it going back to high school. Yeah. So, like I said, it's a lot of high school questions, a lot of high school material. So if you cheated your way through high school like I did, it's going to be quite a bit harder. If you Luckily, snooze your I way pulled, through. Yeah. I, like I did. I cheated, <laughs> snoozed my whole way through. All I did was care about girls and, you know, whatever. I didn't I, care about the, about the future. I if guess. you're like me, you just didn't care because it didn't interest you. I got a B plus average and I snoozed through most of high school. I just couldn't be bothered because yeah. I didn't like it, so I didn't really care. Now, do I regret that? Partially, but you know what? You're, I, when I say this, I, don't, I know I don't want to sound like one of your guys' teachers, but... Put some effort in. Please pay somewhat attention. Don't be like this scumbag over here. Yep. Don't, don't be, be like me. I still luckily somehow pulled through and, and got, I don't know, 70s, 80s. I don't so remember. Think of it this way. If this idiot can get past the ASVAB and score as decent mm -hmm. as he did, so can you. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Exactly. All right, guys, so for the next part of this question, one thing we really want to make, this is like the, one of the key points of this video right yeah. here, right now. This is potentially career changing. Life slash career changing, so listen up to this. And this I've, I've gotten really annoyed with some people, not because they asked me, but because they got screwed. And when I say that, it's because people have told me that they were forced to pick a job at MEPS. And dear God, you do not, I repeat, you do not have to do that. Okay. Don't have to do that. Absolutely correct. So, first thing you're ever going to do is talk to your recruiter. Um, you all probably know that by now. But there will be a point where you have to go to MEPS, that building to get your physical that we talked about already. Yep. A lot of people are told that when you go to MEPS to take your ASVAB and you get your physical and you do all that good stuff, that's when you'll get your job in the Air Force. That's when you're going to learn if you're going to be a cop, a cook, security forces, special forces, intel, whatever, whatever it may be. That is not true. You can get your job pretty much any time. So you can get it when you first talk to the recruiter, you can get it at MEPS, you can get it in the waiting period between MEPS and between going to boot camp. DEP. Delayed entry program. Which is called a... DEP. Yep. And or you can get it even at basic training. If you not... go open general. Yeah. Open anything. Admin, open, so, whatever. What he's saying about open general is if you make it to basic training without getting a job, and by the way, the recruiter, when you first meet him, will give you an entire list of every job in the Air Force that you qualify for based off your ASVAB yes. score and your physical <clears throat> attributes and how well you qualified physically. Yes, absolutely. And you pick your top, I think it's eight now. Eight or nine. You pick your top eight or nine, you write them down, and we'll get into how you get chosen and all that later. But you'll write your top eight or nine down and you will be notified. Your recruiter will call you ASAP when you, if he finds out that you've the job is opened up for you. It's called the job drop. Every and time a job passes by his eyes, your recruiter, his or her eyes, he'll call you and say, hey, that job for in-flight refueling just passed, or, or just dropped, do you want it? No, uh, honestly, that wasn't my first choice. I would like to keep waiting if possible. Okay. And the other thing too is just that those jobs will stick around forever. So it's called a job drop for a reason. First come, first serve. So you don't have to say, like, I don't know, give me a week and I'll think about it. But at that time next week, that job won't be there. Yeah, you you might have a day or so to, to think about it, but. Man, I even had a couple minutes, like one job you got offered to me and I said yes to it. And then uh, he said, like, all right, let me go check on that real quick. Coming back five minutes later and said, no, nope, sorry, I got taken. It's already taken, yeah. Yep. Uh, so there, it's, it's, there are some jobs out there that are almost impossible to get. Uh, Firefighting is a really hard one. In-flight refueling, aerial gunner, you know, where you're sitting on the side of a freaking helicopter. just That'd be so shoot. cool, though. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, everybody wants that. But realistically, on the outside world, if you do that, there's not a lot of job opportunity. Anyways, yeah, well, you did that, though. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's definitely cool. Yeah. Um, let's get back on track. So you can get a job just about any time. You can literally be on almost your last week of basic training and still not have a job. So um, I think there's a designated week where they do it, like fourth or fifth week maybe, or even like after Beast Week. I think it might be after Beast Week. They'll yeah, like call you so. into this room and say, hey, guess what? You're this. Congrats. Get out. Yeah, and you, you don't have a choice. So nope. what that's called is open general. What yep. that means is... You've made it up to basic training. You're in the you pool. You haven't chose to chose a job, and now you're sitting in a pool of uh, basically a waiting list of anything. And the Air Force is going to choose what job you're going to go into. Now and that's well, called open general. Like, you're playing the military lottery with jobs. Essentially, is what you're doing. You're playing the lottery, yeah. and unfortunately, the odds are not in your favor. Like the real lottery. Yeah. Ironic. But chances are, for most open general, now traditionally this is just what I have seen, it's not the truth. And me. Yeah. I can vouch for this. You will most likely be a cop, a maintainer, or admin. I've seen a lot of services too, which and, is like cook, yes. working at the, uh, the behind the counter at the gym, just very, very... Uh, I should have a bad job. Easy. No, yeah. that would be great, man. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. They didn't have to wear AVUs. Them. They wear like the nice shirt and the khaki yeah. pants. Yeah. Still it's a great. uniform though, but so, so it's nice. If you ever hear open... Jer the. The vocabulary for that is if someone came up to me and said, hey, I'm military, or I'm going to be uh, an Air Force cop. Someone else says, hey, I'm going to be a cook. What are you? And I would say, uh, I haven't got it yet. I'm open general. That's how you would, that's kind of how that's worded, how the vocabulary works for that. But if you want my truthful opinion, do not take open general. Don't do open general. I mean, that's why we're Sounds saying this cool. is life change. This is yeah. career changing because try to choose a job. Please try to choose a job. If that you go you open would. general, you could get the worst job. It might not sound bad, but. You're not going to know until you absolutely get it. And we will have another video of discussing different jobs. And, and, right. And so one thing stuff. I really want to power up on, like he said this before, like the recruiting service and everything like that, it sounds like a car salesman. They're trying to sell you a product. And what they're trying to sell you is the military and the job they're trying to attach you in. They're going to make it sound like it's the most badass, amazing thing yeah. you'll ever do in your damn life. Yeah. If for Realistically? For, no. Yeah. So let's, uh, a few guys in intelligence that uh, we know. A lot of them said they thought they were going to be like Jason Bourne. That's how the, 
That, that's how the that's how the recruiters tell you. Again, they're trying to sell you, so they're gonna do what they're gonna tell you what you want to hear to get that sale. The funny thing is about those guys that said they were intel. Like they thought, but like you see in the movie, like they have the all this high tech equipment, like all this like really cool like stuff from Iron Man, like the movies and yeah. shit. And the, you know what they actually say? Nothing fucking works yeah. ever. Oh yeah, yeah. All the computers are always broken. Yeah. It's Apparently, broken. like they just said, like nothing, nothing ever works. It's stupid. Not all the time. I guess it just depends where you go. So okay. Not totally harping on Intel. Intel's great. Yeah, for the most part, like we said, guys, they're trying to sell you a product, and don't be bought into it. If you don't want it, don't take it. If yeah. it seems wrong to you, it doesn't feel right in here, don't take it. Yeah, That's and it. if and if that requires you to go and open general because you keep turning down jobs, you know, then so be it. But because the thing is, you know, they, they're trying to sell you too, but realistically, you're only in it for four to six years. Sure, it's a big portion of your life, but hey, you're in the military, you served honorably, you got some benefits coming your way. Yeah. It could be good, it could be bad, but on the whole, we recommend don't doing it. Just don't yes. do open general. Yes, pick your, your top eight jobs, and the next job that drops, the recruiter will tell you it's not always going to be those top eight, but he'll still ask you, do you want this job? No, I want to wait. Okay, this other job just dropped a week later. Do you want this one? No. I got to say no five times, and then by that fifth, not, not that it's five for everybody, it just depends on the needs of the Air Force at the time, but by that fifth time, um, or fourth time, by the fourth time, my recruiter said, listen, the next job that comes out, it has to, you have to take it. I don't care, like, there's, uh, there's no more room for you to keep waiting. So I was like, oh man, this sucks. Now I could get a horrible job. Luckily, it was my number one job. Um, but the good thing, uh, not a good thing, but just need to be aware of, is the fact that if you were in the DEP too long, they will send you back to Memphis to get reimbursed. Yeah. Let's let's touch on DEP real quick. So DEP is uh, DEP. What delayed is entry it? program. Thank you, delayed entry program. So while you're waiting to go to basic training, after you've you've signed up with the recruiter and you're just waiting, sometimes it could be a week, it could be almost a year. Sometimes while you're waiting to go to basic training or BMT boot camp again, whatever you want to call it. There is a program called Delayed Entry Program or DEP. So basically, it is a it's a gig where you have to keep coming back to the recruiter's office every however week, many every times. Week, yeah, they once might a month. they it's, might make it every week. It's their every coordination, month. really. Yeah, and it's what they'll do is sometimes they'll drug test you to make sure you're not out, you know, smoking again. Um, uh, it's also a way to just check up on you, make sure you didn't leave country and you're trying to bail out of the military and all, all that good stuff. Go premature AWOL. Yeah, and another thing they did with me, I know this and they'll do this a lot, is once a month while you're in debt, while you're waiting to go to basic training, sometimes they'll say, hey, we're going to meet up uh, this Friday or, or two Fridays from now at the local gym. It's all paid for. Um, and we're going to do an hour of PT to get you ready for basic training. So. And one thing I want to touch on real quick, and this is funny because I've seen it. So you get through debt, say, I'm going to basic training tomorrow. Don't, for the love of God... Don't have your last, don't smoke weed below one than last time, don't underage yeah. drink because they will test you when you go to basic training. Yes. And weed stays in your system way longer than a week. Yes. And don't do that. Yes. Please don't do that. That's not on our list of questions, but that is a good point. No, because I only say that because I've seen it so many times. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we got a guy that got kicked out of my flight. Um, they'll drug test you within the first week. It Sometimes is the first, it's yeah. the very first day. Mine was three days after. But within um, that first week of you being there, it will happen. Yeah, there's no getting out of it. Unless no. you're like literally about to die. They'll just probably pull blood while you're in the ER anyway and take it. Um, yep. You are going to get, with that being said, you'll get drug tested in the military at random at any time. I think they do it off a of social security number. Everybody with a four as their third number has to uh, do it. Has to get, yeah, something like that. Uh, it's totally random. They don't never tell you. The DOD doesn't tell us how they do it, but it's completely random. So, okay, time for the next question. So yep. we hit on MEPS. Talked about the recruiter a little bit. Talked about the ASVAB. Those are all yep. pre-basic training. Drug use, all yep. that fun <laughs> all stuff. All that good stuff, yep. So, let's talk about basic training. That's probably what's on everybody's The big ticket item that everyone wants to know yeah, about. Yeah, if you're about to go into the military guarantee, that's probably what you, you're you wanting to know the most about. Yep. And, let us say this, we will make a video dedicated to basic training. Everything you could possibly want to know, we're going to try to put in this video. So, this is just a quick... Q and A, like we said earlier. So, um, yep. And again, you can always leave comments down below. We'll we'll check them as often as we possibly can. We'll get back to you immediately. We so. try as hard as we can, but we're not perfect. But we, the one thing that I definitely know is that we definitely try. Yeah. I see so many bigger YouTubers that like once they get that ego, not an ego, but they get big enough to the point where they feel like they don't have to answer, or they get even a little cocky and say like, "That's such yeah. an easy question. Why would you even ask that?" The thing is, guys, it's just that I'll, I've never been like that with any of you guys. 
you know, the thing, it's a fair, anything's a fair question because I, I understand the feeling of being concerned and wanting to know things. There's nothing wrong with being curious. So Absolutely. never feel bad. If you, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Yeah. I promise. Yeah. If somebody does ask a redundant question or what might seem as it, like a dumb question to some of you out there, please let's keep the criticism to, to, a minimum. to being to a minimum and constructive. Yeah. You know, not, don't just be a, a complete a-hole about it. Be, be, a, be, be constructive. Here, yes. All right. So again, Ask any question you want, any at all. We'll get to it um, as quick as possible. But so, with enough sidetrack, and what's the will, real question we get? We here? will leave our emails at the bottom, right? Yep. Okay. As so I always can, have. You can email us at our personal emails with any questions too. So, but anyways. again, enough sidetracking. Real question. Yes. Basic training. How long? First of all, where is BMT actually? Let's talk about where it is. So where it is? Oh God, lovely JBSA Lackland Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. So back in Texas. San Antonio, Texas. Yep. yep. That is the only. I don't care what state you're coming from. If you are joining the Air Force specifically, you will go to Texas. You will go to that base. That's yep. where all Air Force goes to to do their basic training. Marines, yep. Army, all other branches might have a few bases that they can go to. We don't. Uh, we don't. Yep. Air Force goes to that one. Now, how long is it? So right now I it sits at. Yeah, I know. It changes so much. I know, but by, by, probably by tomorrow it'll be different. Yeah. So it's eight and a half weeks technically. However, seven and a half is when you officially graduate. The last week is Airman's Week or Feelings Week. Mm -hmm. I don't count that as basic training because you're not getting yelled at. You're not being marched around by TIs. Yeah, you're with your family a lot. Um, you're still, you, you are in basic training, but yeah. it's not basic training. Yeah. It's it's kind of a it's more lax. Everybody's getting that senioritis. Everybody's you know. Yeah, everyone wants to get out. You're and cleaning don't. up. You're doing your last thing. So you're talking. You you know you're at that point. It's about demoting you from basic training to tech school and soon operational. It's about making you realize that life's not about getting yelled at and being told that you're stupid. Yeah. So um, the reason I said I hate this question earlier is because it does change all the time. Yeah. Not long ago it was six weeks. When I went through it was eight weeks and like three days so about eight and a half weeks um it, so it's, apparently it's a while ago it was like nine and a half it was yeah uh, it shouldn't ever go below six weeks though so no <clears throat> i can never see anything um, like that let's talk about i know this is on a lot of people's mind and it was mine and yours i'm sure showering naked with other dudes and this is primarily for the dudes out there for females i don't know how y'all feel about showering naked next to other yeah. girls if you if you love it kudos i'm yeah. sure most of this will apply though so yeah here's how i here's here's what i want to say about it when I went in, I was I was slightly afraid, but I'm going to tell you right now, that first day, because you're going to shower every single day. You yep. can't get out of a shower. You have to shower every day. They're going to make you. Don't be that scumbag. Um, you're going to be with 50 guys or so, um, and you guys are going to all shower as quick as possible. Uh, you don't have time to be worried about it. When I went through, there was six to eight shower heads. Now there's like what, 15 or so. 15. Maybe not 15, but there's yeah. more than what you had, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. They're nicer um, than because they're phasing out the old dorms because they're like, they're, they're crap. Yeah. They, they were old and nasty. So yeah. they have more shower heads now. You're still going to have to do at least two people to a shower head, though. Um, if you want to get in and out as quick as possible. At first, it kind of sucks. So look, you're going to get there. You're going to be getting yelled at. There's going to be a ton of stress, a ton of confusion, a ton of maybe depression or anger. All those motions, the last thing you're worrying about is how does my YooHoo look to, <laughs> to other people. No one's looking. The thing is, if anyone really has time to look, then they're kind of the ones slowing everybody else down. Yeah. Nobody cares that much. But I'll tell you one thing. This is just kind of a joke. There's never been a time in my life I've appreciated being blind except for basic training. Yeah. Because <laughs> I couldn't see five feet in front of me, let alone anything that detailed. I don't care how straight you are, how gay you are, whatever. You are going to see peckers whether you want to or not. It, the, the even thing if is, it's in your peripherals. The thing so. is, accept it. And the <clears throat> thing is, it's just that everyone does it. Accept it for what it is and move on. Nobody cares as much as you think you do. Yeah. And if they do, they're probably the problem. Yeah, and one thing I'm going to tell you now is you're going to see all different sizes and shapes, colors, bumps. Uh, yeah, shaven, non-shaven. Point is, you know, some guys shave, some don't before, just because they want to look cleaner um, or not get made fun of because it's hiding in their bush. You know, all this, all this other stuff. We're all men here. We can talk about it. We're yeah, all grown ups here. So the point is, it's just that you know what? It's not as bad as you think it is. Yeah. It's it's just something y'all got to do it. I will say the first day is the most uncomfortable. After that, you'll start building a good rapport with all of your uh, with all the with all the trainees. Hopefully, that you're with. anyway. Yeah, yeah, you'll. you'll yeah. That's another subject. But yeah. you'll, you'll build pretty good rapport with them. It got to the point where me and all my guys, we were able to like joke around making don't drop the soap jokes. And, you know, we're fighting over the shower head. We're just, it, it's I a good time. I was a shower it's a, runner. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good time. It, it's a good time. Yeah. 
in, in, <laughs> in the most non-weird way I can I can possibly say. I don't so. know. Maybe it wasn't me, but there was somebody who would like, oh, they're just straight naked, but they had their web belt on, their boots on, and they would yeah. direct people with the sh to the shower. Oh, like yeah, yeah. Shower. Some <laughs> people just make a good time out of it. They purposely, they, just <laughs> put a, they get butt naked with just boots and a belt, and they, they start directing traffic to the shower. <laughs> Some people drop soap on purpose, or they'll turn it on really cold. To, to I don't know anyone who dropped the soap on purpose. Oh yeah, yeah, it happened all the time. So well, don't worry about in your flight. Then. Don't worry about the shower thing, please. That's a quick, quick like. like you're and gonna be all the things minutes. you will be worried about, that should be like at the very bottom of your yeah. list. Yeah. So we promise it's not that bad. All right, guys. So we have a few more questions for you before we wrap this video up because we know it's getting a little lengthy, and we are both, you know, a little lazy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But we realize that you guys don't want to sit through a 40, 50 minute video. So with that being said, what is the next question that we got? Next question is the food slash the cafeteria at basic training. What so probably one of the biggest key factors of basic training because <laughs> it's... Biggest morale booster, definitely. Well, you, oh my god, yeah. I hate being the chairman. When's chow? When is chow? When are we eating? Shut up. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's a, it's really weird how big <clears throat> it is because it's made into such a big deal. It, the way they have it set up, it's just such a big factor for basic training. Yeah, the way absolutely. It's, for some, it's really weird how it's set up like that. It's it, not a matter of just eating. It's a matter of... It, it, if you're if you're bad at chow... If you're a chow runner, suck. Your TIs will be mad at you a the chow entire runner, day. All right, a chow runner is a position... Yeah. That one person in your flight, two. in your group, or two, I'm sorry, two people in your group gets assigned, and it's a, we'll get into that, but it's a, it's a, if you ever hear the words chow runner, avoid it. You don't want to be a chow runner, okay? And uh, if they suck at their job, your life's going to be miserable too, but that's yeah. a different video. Anyway, don't be a chow runner, regardless so, of that. Let's, let's talk about how it's all set up first. So, yeah. you're going to eat three times a day. That's Breakfast, it. lunch, dinner. No matter how much you beg and cry, you're not going to get any more than that, okay? Nope. So what you're going to do is you're going to wake up, and first thing in the morning, you're going to put on your uniforms, all of you, all 50 plus of you, and you're all going to single file, run down the stairs, and you're going to get into a formation. At that formation, you and other groups will all be standing there waiting for your turn to eat lunch. Yep. Now, your chow runner will go inside, and he'll tell you when you can come out. Uh, or when you can start coming in and then single file line you'll pile into the cafeteria you pick up a tray and you're going to go to there's a little uh counter in front of you a metal counter and then there's the glass and then the food display and then the lunch ladies or guys you will stand at that counter with your tray looking straight tray smack down you're going to be shoulder to shoulder and you have to inch across like this every, when you're sliding down the counter you literally have to do this and you can't look at the guy next to you, you can't talk you can't do anything but breathe, look straight, and the only time, you can't talk, I'm sorry. You can talk if you are ordering. That's the lady it. will say, what do you want? You look down, you, I don't even think you can point. You just tell them what you want, keep looking straight, and then you once don't you be get like, on your plate, just slide to the left a little bit. Don't be like, I was like, yeah, uh, I want some of that, and then like, I want to get, can I get a little bit of that on the side? Yeah, thanks. No, yeah. that's you not how You do have works. a little bit of freedom to choose what you want, but you can't take long. You're going to have an MTI walking behind you in the line. You have the like, freedom of picking when you yeah. want, but you don't have the luxury of time. Exactly. So your trays are going to be smack dab on that counter right next to each other. Let's say this is the end of the tray, and that's the end of the tray. They're going to be touching like that, and you cannot leave a gap in between your trays there. Nope. Those MTIs standing behind you will yell at you. Um, so you get your food, the lady's going to put it on your tray, and you're going to move to the left and go to the next lunch lady, and they'll say, all right, beans, rice, macaroni, whatever it is, and then you'll keep moving and moving and moving, and then eventually there will be a drink fountain. You can go fill up your drink with, they have like Gatorade. Water, water. Gatorade. Like, I think there's like even like, not fruit punch, but there, I think I thought there was something else, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I think it's just the Gatorade. All right, yeah. Um, and then they'll have little snack, little bowls at the end with like cups of peanut butter, yogurt, bananas, stuff like that, that you can just pick and throw into your tray. Yep. And then you all go to tables. Now there's going to be two, three, four rows of tables with four seats at each. When I went through, you had to wait for all four people to sit down. I don't believe that's a thing anymore. I don't think it is anymore, but you had to wait for all four people to sit down before the first, before anybody could take a bite. And the reason I don't believe that's a thing anymore is because you are, <laughs> on paperwork you're given 15 minutes. Are you actually given 15 minutes? No. no. So like maybe 15 to get in, order your food, and get out. But actual eating time, sitting down, eating time. Three to five yeah. minutes. And you're going to eat that food like it's the last meal of your life. You are not allowed to talk. You can't look up. You can't look at the other guys at the, t the, at the table with you. You can't laugh. You can't look, make eye contact with anybody else. You are head in the tray, just scarfing that food down. However, though, don't be like... Well, do you, yeah. don't have, you don't have to like scarf it down like you're about to die. But you know, you have, you'll figure this out maybe after a week or two. You will be, you will have enough time in your head that like I can take my time somewhat and eat this comfortably. You don't have to. Yeah, it's 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 don't make yourself around sick. Four to five minutes. 
Don't make yourself uh, sick. That's Believe it or not, that's more than enough time. Yeah. And also, I keep on saying this, but wait maybe two or three weeks before you get the, the cojones to go up and try and get dessert because the dessert is right in front of the snake pit where all the MTIs are. Yeah. Unless you got major balls, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, so the snake pit is what everybody fears. It's basically, like he was saying, it's a table that's designated for all your boot camp instructors to sit at. And they all eat, they're human too, they gotta eat. So they're sitting there and if you want dessert, you have to go pretty much- In front, like right in their straight yeah. line of view to get it. And you, a lot of times they'll just pick on you and say, Airman, get over here, train, get over here now. And then they'll just ask you embarrassing questions and everybody's trying to listen, but you can't look. Or one of the worst things they'll do is they won't say anything, but they'll eyeball you. Like the watch will be like, and then you feel them looking at you, but you yeah. can't look back at them, so... And then you gotta do everything right, like, there's a certain motion you gotta do in order to, like, properly take it out. One thing that, one thing I wanna reiterate, though, not reiterate, but to bring up, sorry, is once you have something in your hand, drill movement, stop. Yep, yeah, no marching, no doing any facing or side movements Cause that's how stuff like drops. That. Yeah, you walk just like a normal human being, like a normal civilian, like a normal human being when you have your tray in your hand. However, once you put your tray down, or you, once you get up, quietly walk to the trash can, throw your stuff away, put your tray up, and then you have to do facing movements, marching. Basically, you have to do marching back towards, uh, back outside of the, the defect. And then you have to get back into the formation you were waiting at uh, to get lunch. And then once everybody gets in that formation, once everybody's done and gets in that formation, then you can go about your day or doing whatever So exiting is the thing. So once you get directed to where you have to sit, you'll be told by your chart runner, don't worry about it. You have to walk to a certain wall, walk around and wait in line, put your stuff up, wait for a wingman, and then go back to where you have to be. Yeah, yeah. You don't go anywhere in basic training alone, except yeah. maybe the bathroom. Yeah, you always have to bring a buddy. It's a buddy system. Everything you do. So. Yeah. So you always have. Yeah, that's a good thing because you know I was nervous about being alone, like being like swarmed by TIs. You don't have to worry about that. I mean, they'll they'll label you individually, but you I mean you'll have somebody there. Exactly. So yeah. So we pretty much we we went so into the weeds for you guys. It's absolutely insane. We're pretty good at that. So this is a great introductory video for him because I know he really wants to become a part of this channel and this yep. is great for him. <clears throat> so if you guys have any more questions, leave them down there. And if we don't answer, we're either working on getting you an answer or we might even be saving it for a video. But we'll usually give yes. you a short little, we'll give you a short little yes or no or, or whatever. But usually we also save them for videos to reiterate again or to bring up again because there's a bigger answer than I can text on a computer. <laughs> and last thing I want to say, so this was just a few out of a million questions. Oh, very, yeah. very basic questions. It Depending on how well this video does, we may potentially make some very, very in-depth videos. Uh, we really were talking about doing some basic training videos, like a step-by-step -step guide of the first day you get onto the bus to go to basic training all the way to the very last day. We're talking everything you could possibly want to know. We have big plans for it. We got to see how this video does. So with that being said, please like, leave us uh, subscribe if you, if, if you really- Share it around with your buddies. Yeah, exactly. You know. This is uh, this is just very, very basic stuff. We understand very well that we did not cover nearly as many things as but we But if we did, to. this video would be hours long and quite frankly, we don't have the time. Yeah, and but, neither do you, I'm sure. So yeah, I think that's it, right? I feel that's pretty much everything. So make sure you guys, like I said, questions, leave in the comments, you got email, all of our social medias are down there. Yeah. All the fun stuff you need is down there all the goodies so with that being said we will see you guys probably next week and uh yeah and again i'm anthony anderson you might see me again so have yeah. a good one see you guys